January 31st, 2020. I'm Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop. I have a ton of stuff for you guys today. This live stream might go two hours. Hopefully it doesn't, but please be patient. Um, we just have a ton of stuff. So at the very end of this video, I'm going to show you and talk to you about how I starch, all my starching techniques, and I learned those from Lisa Bonjean. So um, it's really her technique that I'm using. Um, and I'll be answering questions and just live demoing what I do. Um, it's not for everybody, and we'll talk about that at the end. But we want to start off with Bloomtopia. So Bloomtopia, if you don't know, is our charity quilt for 2020. We're raising money for Make-A-Wish, and with all of your help, we have raised $20,264. Yay! And so uh, we are trying to get to $30,000 from you guys, and so we just have $10,000 more to go. Kevin and I are gonna give $10,000, and Mark Dunn is gonna give $10,000 from Moda Fabrics. That's gonna grant us five wishes uh, with Make-A-Wish. When you donate at the link in the comments, um, it is goes directly to Make-A-Wish. And so we are kicking it off. It is our first free pattern. So, our first release of the free pattern. So, on our blog, everything is listed, and there's papers that you can print out that look like this. So, if you're gonna make this, we have a quilt kit. I'll show you the kit. Here is the kit. And it has everything you need for the quilt top, the binding. It has a specialty ruler, and it has triangle paper. And the background, and the full pattern. Here's the little ruler. So, and it also has the full pattern for the entire thing if you don't wanna wait. That's the only way you can get it early is to buy the kit. So this is what our kit looks like. It comes in this cute little box. And here's our backing set. And the back says 2020. But if you don't wanna use the kit, I'm gonna tell you the fabric requirements. And I'm gonna show you some things that we have done in-house um, to show you what it would look like if you don't want the kit. Um, Cause this is all about raising money for Make-A-Wish. And we're asking that if you're gonna do this for each pattern or each block, you give $5. Um, you can donate once or multiple times, or you can donate as little or as much as you would like. Anything that you do, we totally appreciate. So um, the fabric requirements, if you're not gonna buy the kit, you would need six yards of background, 20 fat quarters, and three quarter yard binding. For your pieced backing, that is a little bit more complicated. It's one and a quarter yards background, two fat quarters, two fat eighths, and then five and a quarter yards for all the, the big piece. And that's if you wanna do a specialty pieced backing. This is all on our blog, The Jolly Jabber. And this morning we released block one, and block two. So over and under is our first block in release one, and our block two in release one is bright future. So you're gonna make, make each of these blocks twice. No, once, so you make two blocks. So I'm gonna show you what the blocks look like, and all of this information is on our blog. So these are the blocks that Chelsea made. Sherry and Chelsea are the designers of this fabric, which is Summer Sweet. So this is the first block that is over and under. And this is what you would make if you have the kit. And this is the second block. So this is what it would look like if um, you're making it with the kit. And now I'm gonna show you some different variations if you wanna use fabric from your stash. Teresa made this from Harvest Road, which is a collection by Layla Boutique. And I'm just gonna show you the two blocks. And her piecing is perfect, look at that. I know. This one is by Nancy, and um, this is Flower Garden by Lindsay McRae. This is Stiletto, and Deborah made this one. And the designer is basic gray. This one is Memoirs by Three Sisters and Sue made this block. 
And so you can see that with all of this, you can come up with a totally different look. This one is speckled fabric and she used an Essex background and Crystal is making this one. So there are our blocks so that that can help you really think outside the box if you want to do modern or traditional or contemporary or whatever. Um, obviously we have kits to make it easy for you, um, but you can download the list of fabric requirements and use whatever. Make sure to use our hashtag, which is on the screen. Um, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to answer questions on that before I show you some other free stuff that we have. Do you have questions, Lily? Oh, sorry, there's no questions. It's using the over and under block from release one. This fabric is Canning Day. Jocelyn designed it and Sue made it and Mike from My Long Arm Quilter quilted it. So super pretty, right? You can see that in any collection. Okay, I gotta show you the back. The back is amazing. This is awesome. You like it, Lily? That's so cute. I know, I like it. I might have to do one like this. I haven't done one like this before, so I really like that. So that's a totally free pattern. And then our second finishing pattern, all it uses the Bright Futures variation block, completely free pattern that you can get on the blog. So all of your information on fabric requirements, everything is listed. And here it is, this one is smaller. This is our finishing pattern two. At Jocelyn designed it, Nova stitched it, and Mike from My Long Arm Quilter quilted it. It uses the early bird block. The star accent fabric is strawberry jam, and the background is garden variety. So you can see that Nova just used fabrics from her leftovers or her scraps to be able to put this together. This is a great, um, I love this one. It would make a great table topper or just a little accent to your house. So let me know if there's any questions on any of the Bloomtopia. And then um, there is a little bit more for Bloomtopia that I'm gonna talk about, but biggest, you know, huge thank you from everyone at Fat Quarter Shop, Kevin and I, $20,000. I mean, every time I'm a little OCD about clicking on that link. Okay, how much have we raised? How much have we raised? Because if I say I want to raise 30000 I really want to do it. Um, we do have a pop-up that we can use that's going to show you um, our different goals. And... Um, so these are our goals. And so you can see that we had a goal at 8000 and that was our finishing one the free pattern and then we had the goal of 15,000 so we released that today and then we have two more so when we get to 22,000 there'll be another free pattern and when we get to 30,000 there'll be another free pattern so there's even more to look forward to so if you you know if you don't have time to make the really big quilt which is our quilt kit you could all obviously you know maybe use one of the smaller ones and donate five dollars for one of the smaller ones or anything that we can do to get the donations up is really what we're doing. So let me know if there's any questions on that before I go to the next one, sorry. All right, uh, Julie Washburn said, what is the specialty ruler? Oh, okay, so the specialty ruler makes this right here. So see how this little tulip is not a 45 degree angle, it's more of a no, it's like just not a straight angle. So it's a ruler that will, um, you make it bigger and then you trim it down. But if you um, don't buy the kit, because the only way you can get that ruler is in the kit, um, there's a template in the pattern to do it. So it makes, I, I don't know anything about angles. That Maybe that's why my daughter is struggling with geometry right now. But um, it just is like an angle that you can't make automatically in quilting. I, that probably makes more sense. All right, uh, Tracy Eckhart was asking, when I bought the kit, does that money go to Make-A-Wish? So basically the way that Kevin and I do it is we just say we're gonna write a check for $10,000 because of the profits of the kit, if that makes sense, because there is a cost of buying the inventory. I mean, it's all very complicated. Sorry. All right, and then uh, next question, Jen Jessica Knox was asking, what fabric is the pink on the back for? 
one of the samples that we had to show. Okay, so the very first sample, it is, I believe, strawberry jam. Denise is gonna look. It is Canning Day. Sorry, Canning Day by Cory Yoder. And then we have two super chats. Yay! Uh, first one from Linda Prather. She just gave us ten dollars, so thank you so much, Linda. Thank you. Woo! They're super piggy. And we also had another super chat from Gabriel Fuentes for two dollars. He says, "Thank you, Kimberly, for all you do." Thank you. Thank you, Gabriel. Oh, he's so cute. All right, and then we also have a new YouTube member, uh, Cassie Barker. She just joined right before we started the stream. Thank you. So welcome, Cassie. Yay. All right. And Stitch by Stitch was asking, can you remind me what Bella White you love to use? I'd like to use color 98 or 97 or 200. The one that I use the most is 200. But I do like all three of those. Okay, so um, I'm going to pop up on the screen real quick the dates for the, for the Bloomtopia so you can just see it. And so that is going to show you, like, if you're going to be sewing along. These are the dates, um, and these dates are all on our blog, and that will really help you if you want to stay on track. So this is kind of the whole schedule. And then for Cross Stitch, which is the other image that she just had, So that is just the corner of the cross stitch. Um, and so with cross stitch, we are off also offering a free cross stitch. And so that was released this morning also. And so for the cross stitch, we were just saying, you know, if you did the cross stitch, you know, we thought $15 would be reasonable to um, donate to make a wish. And so that was released this morning. We um, have a cross stitch channel, which is called Fat Quarter Shop, no, Fat Quarter Floss Tube, and you can go back on Tuesday's video and it has all the information that you would need. We would love for you to subscribe to it, but that was released this morning, also the cross stitch. So just to let you know that we're trying to, that's how we're trying to get to 50,000 this year versus last year by offering more. You can see that we're really doing a lot, trying to offer a ton of stuff. And we wanna give a big thank you to Priscilla because uh, Priscilla from The Real Housewives of Cross Stitch finished it for us and it is right over here and you can see it. Ta da it's so pretty so big shout out to her and um so the next thing i was going to talk about was this week lori holt was here she's getting on a plane right now to go home so i'm so sad but we did a quilter's cottage photo shoot so the quilt is behind me the book is coming out in may um it might come out a little bit earlier but um lily's gonna zoom in so you can see all of the quilts um it is, we had a cross stitch. And then at the very bottom, there's a fence and then under the fence are three quilt blocks. And this is what it was based on. So this is one of Lori Holt's first cross stitch patterns she published. It's just, it's, we have this available now and it's called Quilter's Cottage. And we got so many emails and so many phone calls and so many live stream comments that they wanted this in a quilt. So um, she put it together in a quilt with the Vintage Happy Collection. And so it's hanging on the wall. We went to Fredericksburg and did a little photo shoot. Um, in the book are instructions to make the quilt. The cross stitch is totally separate, but also to make the table runner, which is right here. So this is the table runner and the pillows that you see right here also. So those instructions are all part of the book. And so that is brand new and we've got some photos from the photo shoot um, that we can show you, um, just to show you like some of the photo shoot. So this is the cover of the book and so there you can really see those quilt blocks that are at the bottom of the quilt. Oh, sorry. There. And then this is, I think this is the first photo that we did. So this is the table runner and the house that we uh, photoed in was really perfect. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is so funny. There was like a vintage <laughs> phone and every one of us, I think, picked it up to see if we could really dial. But if we look, there's no cords. So I was kind of like, yeah, that would have been smart if I would have seen if there was cords. So I was kind of making fun of myself in my head. <laughs> Who would you have dialed if it worked? I don't know. I'm nobody. <laughs> 
I was like, well, I think uh, Jocelyn dialed zero. I was like, well, where does zero go even? Because like when I was a kid, zero mm-hmm. went somewhere, but now I don't think zero goes anywhere. Yeah, it was like the operator, yeah. right? And then this was, um, in the, it was a built-in desk. Oh no, it wasn't a built-in desk. It was like a built-in nook in the wall and then the desk fit perfectly. So um, we decorated, um, we're sending that sewing machine home with Lori today. Um, so she's got like five or six of those. And then there's the cross stitch, which is available now. And that's just like a little shot of the bed and just a cute little photo. Yeah, so these are just photos. Oh, oh wait. Okay, so there's Lily. There's Lily. Yay. She's videoing uh, her sewing or messing with the machine or something. Mm-hmm. And oh, there's Lori. So there's Lori in the left, and that was um, everybody trying to figure out how to get the get the quilt on the wall. And we put it up with contact. What are those things you did? We contact we strips. tried command hooks, yeah. Command hooks, and then it fell down. So yeah. then, what did we do? We ended up uh, holding having it. Jocelyn and Carrie there on the sides hold it up for the photo. So that's Mr. Honey in the top left. Mr. Honey. Yeah. So that was quite the adventure. Yeah. Okay. Yay! So let me know if you'll have any questions. Of course, that is the Quilter's Cottage book. It comes out in May. It might come out earlier because we got the photo shoot done already in January. Um, if you have any questions on that book, it's all a Lori Holt designs. Yes. Okay. Linda Gillespie was asking, the book has several patterns? So it has the pattern for the quilt kit, which is, sorry, the quilt, the quilt, the big quilt, which is behind me. It has the pattern for the table runner right here, the flower, and then three pillows. One, two, three. And then the cross stitch, which is right here, is totally separate. And it'll be like, we'll have a picture of the cross stitch in the intro just to talk about, you know, how Lori designed that and how you know, it morphed into a quilt. Iris Rivera is asking, is it all piecing or there's applique too? All piecing. So Lori does a lot of free applique patterns that she does with Riley Bla in conjunction with Riley Blake. Um, all of the books that Lori and I do together under the It's So Emma brand are all pieced. So that's how she kind of keeps it separate. Karen Anderson's asking, what size will Lori Holt's pillows be? These are 24 inches, and she put 26 inch pillows inside them. All right, and then Terry. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. We're gonna we're gonna confirm it. I might be a little bit off on that, but I'm close. I'm within the 20s. <laughs> uh, and then Teresa says, "Whoever does your set decorating is really good." Yay, Cody and uh, Denise do it, right? Yes. Yeah. I, I think she might have also been saying be, at the photo shoot. Oh, at the photo shoot. Okay, so at the photo shoot, uh, Lori did that, and Sarah and Jocelyn, and me and Lily just stand around and like, what do we do next? Yeah. Lily. I'm not good at styling. I'm not speaking for Lily. I'm speaking for myself. I'm like, I don't know what to do. It, yeah, they're a lot better at it. So I just stand back and I'm like, just tell me what you need and tell me what to do. Yeah, tell me where to move. It, it works out really well. I was trying to take a nap, though. I was so tired that day. Um, if, if you want a picture. It's a of- horrible picture. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, YouTube members um, got got to see some uh, other behind the scenes pictures of the photo shoot. It was me trying to take a nap. And, well, yeah, I was Kimberly actually was ordering Kevin Lynch. I was so exhausted. <laughs> um, okay, so these are 24 inch pillows and we put 26 inch pillows inside so that they're puffier. That's how Lori likes to do it. Of course, you can put a 24 inch pillow form inside also. All right. And let's see. We have a super chat from Susie Clary for twenty four ninety nine. Thank you. Thank you, Susie. And we also have a new YouTube member, Ashley Mass. Welcome, Ashley. Thank you. Ooh, ooh. I'll wait for Super Piggy to fly off the screen and then give you your confetti cannon. Yay. All right. And Jennifer Daniel Johnson's asking, what is the Starbucks you're drinking today? Oh, it's what I always drink. It is a black, unsweet iced tea, extra ice, no water. Ooh, ooh. So um, there's uh, some other new Lori items coming that um, we have. The first one is Baked with Love, which is right here. So um, I'm not going to take it off the ladder. We're just going to zoom in. This is a pre, um, like a kit that's put together in a little box from Riley Blake. And it is using vintage happy fabric and it's little ovens. And that should be coming um, in the next month. And then the other one is right here. It's called Good morning mugs table runner and it also comes in a cute little box 
and um, those are coming soon. They're just packaging them right now. And those also use Vintage Happy, which is the collection that is in the Quilter's Cottage book. So there's that, um, and we got those for photography. So I thought um, we should show those since um, we're borrowing them, um, and we're gonna send them back. So by the time the kits come in, the quilts will not be here, so I thought I would show them ahead of time. They're on our Coming Soon page, and you can click to be notified when it arrives. Are there any questions? Uh, we have a new YouTube member, oh. Virginia Matthews. Welcome, Virginia. Thank you. Yes, like I said, there's just a few extra behind the scenes pictures there for members this week as the perk. We had a lot of fun at the photo shoot. Okay, so uh, Moda Blockheads is a new free sew along that Moda is hosting this year. It's gonna run through February of 2021. They're gonna be giving you 56 free patterns. There's gonna be a six inch and 12 inch, and then some of them are gonna have different sizes. And I decided to go ahead and start mine it's completely free and all the information would be on the Moda, Moda um, blog and it links to the different designers and that's where you will get the pattern. So you can refer there. And I am going to, there's a lot of free finishing patterns available um, on that blog, but I'm gonna use Lori's Farm Girl Vintage 2 finishing, which is right here. So I'm going to be using this finishing with the Moda block heads. So I'm gonna show you, and I'm gonna be doing it row by row. So these are my first three blocks. So um, block one, block two, block three. So I'm just going to be making the harder blocks in the 12 inch size and the easier blocks in the six inch size. And one thing that I'm doing, I'm gonna give you a little tip, you don't have to do it. If you read her book, it's gonna tell you what to cut to add the sashing. I cut my strips bigger and I'm trimming my blocks down with the Creative Grid seven and a half inch square ruler, CGR seven, and the CGRSQ14, and this is the 14 and a half inch ruler. So I am just adding my sashing much larger, trimming down, and that's how it looks so perfect. Because I didn't make it perfect, I trimmed it to be perfect. Um, and that does, I know you're gonna email me and tell me that waste fabric, I'm sorry. I know it does, but I would rather have a perfect quilt than, than um, extra fabric. So, let me look and see, if I have some notes in here. Um, in my little quilt, quilting journal, I'm just keeping track of how many blocks I've made that are six inch, how many I'm making that are 12 inch. Um, I am using 44216-11 for the sashing for my 12 inch blocks. 55195-19 for the sashing for my six inch blocks. I am going to be making 20 12 inch blocks and 36 inch blocks. I'm using mostly Mackinac Island from Minnick and Simpson and then just a ton of scraps um, or just you know stuff in my stash that I have. I just went through and pulled all my creams so that I have a lot of creams. And this is gonna be really fun. And then what I will be doing, any applique block that comes through or maybe a block that just doesn't fit my style. I'm going to be using blocks from Vintage, Chris Vintage Christmas, Spelling Bee, Farm Girl Vintage 1, and Farm Girl Vintage 2. And I'm just gonna pick traditional blocks or blocks that I like so that it can be really a Kimberly quilt and I don't have to feel like I have to applique if I don't wanna applique, and I don't. I'm also using the Cream Motive Mix Fat Quarter Bundle um, that we sell and we put that together just for this quilt. And we have some shout outs of people that are um, stitching um, the motor block kit. So we'll show those. So you can see kind of what other people are doing. This one's really cute. This is Amy Milan. Milan. Yeah, and she is using Little Snippets by Bonnie Camille, which is an older line, and that's great. That's a way to use up older fabric. You don't have to buy anything new. You can just use what's in your stash already. And this is Nancy Rogers, and I love hers. Um, I'm not fabric. I'm not sure exactly what fabric this is, but I think it's Moda. And I like the little fussy cut leaf in the center. And then Jolyn Kettyage. Um, anyone following Moda Block has three. Here's my week one block. My plan is to use scraps from projects throughout the year, and I'll use six inch and twelve inch 
and I'll have a quilt representing all the projects I completed in the year. So that's a great idea. Ooh. And this is Susan Keston Gway. And so you can see that she printed out her pattern and she put it on the Lori Holt book stand um, that we have uh, a couple left of. And then that way she can cut and then piece with the book stand standing up. And Sandra Jacob, this is block three. And she said she had a bit of a struggle with fabric selection and she loves that Queen Anne's Lace. So I think Queen mm. Anne's Lace is the fabric collection or the design. And then Mary Ann Levinson Lambert, here's the first two blocks of Moda Blockheads, looking forward to every Wednesday. And I think she's using Holly Taylor fabric from Moda. Okay. Yay! So um, I love that everybody is doing that, but it's a great way to, you know, get a free pattern, um, feel like you don't have to buy anything, um, have something to look forward to. They release the patterns every Wednesday. So, um, and I've seen a lot of the blocks. They're super cool. All right. We do have some questions. Okay. Uh, Deirdre Powell, Powell asking about the extra Lori Holt quilts we had on set is asking if those are reservable. They are, um, you just get a notification when they come in stock. We're not reserving them or pre-selling them, but we have a ton on order, so I don't think we're gonna sell out. We might sell in with, out within the first two weeks, but not the first day. I say that now, but I mean, I we ordered a lot of them. All right, uh, Lori Santamara says, what size triangle paper was used, please, about your Mona blockheads? Oh, I used a bunch. So this one I used one and a half inch finished right here for this one. This one I didn't, this one I didn't use any. And this one I can't remember, but I did use triangle paper for this one. I think it's one inch. Here, I can look right here, have a ruler. One and a half inch finished. So these are the same. So I used one and a half inch finished so far. But I'm gonna be using, um, anytime there is a half square triangle, I always use triangles on a roll and then I just figure out in my head how to figure out what I need for that. Right. But I do think um, making the blocks and one of the things that I hear over and over is, oh, you know, I made my block, it's I'm supposed to be six and a half, but it's six and a quarter. That's why I make my sashing bigger and trim it down. Um, if you're somebody who doesn't like, like to waste fabric, don't do it. Um, but what I did is I'm just making big strips and then just cutting, I'm not even cutting it down into the rectangle. I'm just cutting big strips, adding them, chopping them off. It saves time um, and then trimming down. And that's how my blocks are looking so perfect. And also starching, which I'm gonna talk about at the very end. All right, and Stitch by Stitch was asking, if a pattern is only available in PDF form on your website, can I call customer service and have them mail me a printed copy? I don't have a printer. Uh, I don't know. I mean, that would be really hard because then we would have to print it for everybody who called. So I don't think we could do that. Yes. But I mean, you could definitely like save it, go to Kinko's. Yeah. A you few could people. also like just open your laptop and just put your like, you know, put it on your screen and then just sew from your screen. Yeah, that's what I do. A few people were suggesting um, Staples as well and Office Depot as staples. places you can go uh, print places, uh, print things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you cannot print places, I think. Print places. All right. Okay, so um, I just wanted to remind you guys that we are doing the FQS Sew Down. It is from February 1st to March 31st. All of that information is on the Jolly Jabber blog. And I just wanted to remind you, all the information is on there, but we are going to start with an RFL thread. So either like a spool or a cone. So you just take an RFL and then you can have a before and after photo. And you're going to stitch with whatever you start with from February 1st to March 31st and kind of see like, can you use a full spool or a full cone by then? But we do have a coupon and that's what I was gonna remind you of. The coupon is 15SEWDOWN, 15 so down. All the information's on our blog and today is the very last day to use that coupon for 15% off any RFL thread. And then we have some people um, that are gonna join us with that. So I'm just gonna show you some cute little pop-ups of people that are sewing along with us. Right. Oh, yeah. Wrong one. Oh. Give me one sec. Okay. 
Evil Olive Quilts. Okay, so she's going to use RFL 6727. Yay! And then Pat Bro is using, let's see if we can figure out what color that is. No, I can't figure it out. Let's see. Uh, mm. Oh, 2020. Color 2020. No, that's so down. Yeah, that's, the soda. that's what I was going to say, too. And then I was like, wait, no, that's the year. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what color she's using, but wait. it's a good one. Yeah, I feel like it's 2021, maybe. I yeah, I bet you're right. And then Aunt Moa, she's going to be using color 2024. Yay. Yay. Okay, so I wanted to show last year we did a free pattern that uses the H100 triangles on a roll. It is a free pattern on our blog called Patchwork Pinwheels and it's all finished and what i did was i used leftovers throughout 2019 and put them into a quilt so that i didn't have as much left over super cute and it was quilted by gina tell of thread graffiti and here's the back on the back i used this print from Lori holt Ooh. it is a home deck print and we are currently out of stock but more will come in stock in march april it just sold really fast and so that's super, I'm super excited that Gina quilted it and super excited that I'm done with it. So again, completely free pattern on our blog. And that was what I did last year. And you can see that from that quilt, there was a ton of pieces. And so it ended up being a little bit of a chore to use up all those pieces because it was taking me forever to make those tiny pieces. So I decided for 2020 to do something much easier so that I, um, wouldn't be spending so much time on the after. So these are the blocks I have done so far. I'm just gonna show you some. I'm using the log cabin paper, six inch. It's back in stock. It's by It's So Emma and um, Fat Quarter Shop. But this is, so this is some Mackinac Island that is gonna be left over from what I just showed you, which is the Moda Blockheads. Yeah. And we do know that uh, it is pronounced Mackinac for those of you who are telling us. Sorry, I- You're good. Yes, sorry. And this is Early Bird, and this is left over from a quilt that I'm about to show you that's next. It's Early Bird. What? At Home. Oh, sorry, it's called At Home. By, it's Bonnie Camille. So this <laughs> is left over from the quilt that I have below, and then this is left over from Holly Berry, which I used on the quilt for Corey Yoder's next book called A Very Yoder, a Very Yoder Christmas. And what I have found useful is using the add a quarter Sorry, ruler a and the seam, quick seam press. And I did a video with Lori that will come out in a couple of weeks. I'm showing how I use it, but this really helps with the um, sewing them. And I'm using color 2000 that I always use with RFL. So I kind of keep it in this little box and it goes in my drawer and then I just pull it out as I need it. And then you can see that I've got like this pad already pulled off. You know what I mean? Like. It's all ready to go. So let me know if y'all have any questions on that. Um, it's been a lot of fun because those are a lot easier to do than last year's. I think I cut off a little bit more than I could chew last year. I was like, oh my goodness, right. what a bad idea. Uh, Sharon Berkemeyer says, how many pinwheels were on that quilt? Do you know? Yeah, I do. We're gonna get the pattern, but yeah, it's on the pattern. Ooh. Okay, and then uh, just comment from Deidre Powell. She says, shout out to y'all for the Ultimate Beginner Quilt Series. I can't thank you enough. Taught me a lot and really gained confidence. Thank you, Deidre. Yay! That means a lot. So the pinwheel, there's 440 pinwheels and 1,760 half square triangles. That's too many for a leftover quilt. So yeah, and it's a completely free pattern. Okay, so coming up, we have the Charming Baby book by Melissa Corey. It is um, coming out in a month or two, and we're gonna have a sew along. So um, on the pop-up, we can show the sew along dates before I show the quilt, so you can see um, kind of what we're gonna be doing. Oh. That's the cover of the book. Yes. And then this is gonna be, um, we've already got this on our blog, so if you need any of this, just go to our blog, but we're starting on April 7th, and um, it's got all your fabric requirements and anything you would need to know we have put online. And now I'm gonna show you the quilt. It's ginormous. So I'll just kind of rotate it. This is using the At Home Collection by Bonnie and Camille.
And you can see that um, those were some of the log cabin blocks were leftover fabrics from this. Super, super cute. And big shout out to Gina Tell of Thread Graffiti. She quilted this one for me and it came back, oops, last week. Super fun, super big quilt. And on the back, there is a, we have instructions for a piece backing. And this is how the piece backing looks. And I put in a label from the Sweetwater Label Company in there and I just kind of fit it in. And it just has my name, it doesn't have the year or anything. So that's just totally optional. So that is that. So let me know if y'all have any questions on that. I know I've shown that before, um, but I thought it was really cool that it's back and I'm gonna take it home. It's so cute. I think it's the first quilt I've ever made that's red and green. Uh, Annie Shaw is asking, where's Skylar? Oh, we didn't have as many quilts, so he didn't come today. Sorry, he's downstairs working. Yeah. He's probably sad. He misses me. No, I don't know. Is he, <laughs> maybe he might even be off today. I don't know. I just no, literally. He's here. Is he here? Yeah. Yeah, sorry. No, I don't know. I think it's, I don't know. I just show up and do the video. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I just show up for the video. That's funny. Marilyn well, I try Mon not to think of anything else because it gets in your head, like, before, you know what I mean? Like, I don't mm -hmm. know. Marilyn Monroe says, will there be courthouse step paper like log cabin? Yes. All right. And then I think we had some shout outs for log cabin as well. Mm -hmm. If we yeah. want to go back to those. Yay. Oh, that's cute. So she used different fabrics throughout. I really like that one. That's urban quilts. That's like a mix of modern and contemporary. I like that. And then see Kelly quilt. That's super cute. And so you can see that when I did mine, I kind of used the same fabrics. And everyone here is using different. And so that looks really good. And then KS Curse too. That's cute. I think that's all Sweetwater. And then Susan Castanguay. That's cute. And then she's got a little frame that holds the papers. I need that. Let me give me one of those. And then Michelle Rialo, that is Sugar Creek. Super cute. Oh, Pinkerville. Jody Van Dyne Griffin. Super cute. Look at the little ducky pin holder. Oh, no, quack, quack. <laughs> quack, quack. We were at an antique store yesterday, and Lori bought something that she's going to make into a pin holder. Because I was like, what is that? She's like, I'm going to turn it into a pin cushion. I was like, oh, cute. Because I would have never thought of that. And then Kim West, oh my gosh, she's got a lot done. 24 blocks, yay! And then Angela Mingi Bollinger. And Amy Kamiski. So I'm so excited. Okay, and see, hers looks more like a courthouse set because she's not using the light and dark. She's just using random. So that's a way that you can make it look totally different. And then Anna Keys, super cute. And she's doing 12 inch, so that's cool. Back to the beginning. Yay! All right. And I believe we have a few questions. Okay. Uh, Kathy Cracker says, what size triangles on a roll for the pinwheel quilt? One inch. H100. And then Anne Marie Mikowski was asking, is there a hashtag to use for the log cabin blocks? There is. Let me find it real quick. Oh, no. There it is. Yay! 2020 log cabin cult. All right. Funny comment from Jennifer Daniel Johnson. She says, uh, when you held up the, the baby quilt, she said, perfect size for all the grown up babies in our lives. I know, really. <laughs> and that's the, that's what we wanted to do with the baby quilt is because sometimes people don't want to buy like a baby book because you know, you might not have a grandbaby or a kid, like all my kids are older. So I really like that we did the sew along because then it kind of gives you a reason to buy the book because then you can do more with the book than just, and when I was categorizing my books yesterday, um, I was kind of doing like a baby section, a, a, you know what I mean? Like modern, anyway, I was organizing my books and there's really not a lot of good baby books out there. So I was kind of like, woo, this is gonna be a good one. All right, and then a few people have been wondering uh, what the pillow on your left is. Oh, I'm gonna do that next. Okay. Or at, soon. I'll just do that now since you asked. Okay, so.
So Pillow Talk um, is a new book that we published for Aditya's Star. It's super fun. It has 25 pillows in it, and we've been doing a pillow fight on our blog, which has been a lot of fun. So you can visit our blog, and each week it's like um, it's like a basketball bracket. That's the only way I can think of it. Um, it's like you vote, and then each week you vote, and then you advance, and then at the end there's going to be a winner. So these are the pillows for this week, and you can still vote. So this first one is by Melissa Corey, who is the author of Fat Quarter Baby. Not Fat Quarter Baby, Charming Baby. And um, this is the chevron pattern, and she just used low volume prints. So cute, I really like it. And so see, you can see, like the effect she did of all the colors. And then this book, I can tell this is Tilda fabric. Sherry Falls of This and That Pattern Company. This is the Mother's Day pillow, and she used the Old Rose Collection by Tilda. So you can vote to see which one you like better and see who advances. I like all of them. They've all been really original. Mm -hmm. And then on this one, let me see what kind of application she did. She just, she just used Fusible, fused it down, and didn't put any stitching on it because that's what a lot of people are saying on um, like um, Facebook and my Facebook group, Kimberly Stitch Squad. A lot of people are saying they're just um, using a fusible, sticking it down, and then like Gina Tell was talking about it, and just not quilt, not doing stitching on it because it is just a pillow. And you know, a lot of times you switch out your pillows and you're not like sleeping. It's more decoration. You don't like need it to hold up forever like a quilt would which is really good and I think it's like really I think Gina really encouraged other people to do that and not be so scared of applique yes okay Shelly Stewart's asking where do we go vote on the blog so go to the Jolly Jabber and it's one of the most recent posts you could even search pillow fight and then you can see like all the other or pillow talk you can see the previous pillows that won I lost Y'all didn't vote for me. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was you versus a right? It's fine. Okay. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, can you show the backs, please? Sure. So this is Sherry's. And below back. And same thing here, and below back. And it's funny because they look the same. Oh, and that's, that's funny. totally random. But I, yeah, they're not the same, but they look the same. They're one's a little bit lighter. That's crazy that they both use the same backing. All right, Jamie M was asking: Is there a chart of how many log cabin paper blocks equal various size quilts? No, but that's a good idea. We can do that for the blog. That would be a good blog post. Mm -hmm. And we have six inch size and 12 inch and we could use it like as a guide. We could, yeah, we could do a little blog post on it. I mean, we can't do it within a week, but I bet within two or three weeks we can put a blog up. And then I am going to, um, what I'll do in around June when I have enough blocks, that's when I had enough blocks last year to design, is um, I kind of laid them on the floor and I'll come up with some kind of design that's not just, you know, not just four by five. I'll do something a little bit more creative um, and then that will be a free pattern just like patchwork pinwheels was. But that'll be later in the year as I see kind of how my colors come together, that kind of thing. I have to kind of see how it's looking. All right. And then we just got a super chat from Susan McCallan for $5. Thank, Thank you, you, Susan. <laughs> Yay. I love watching his little cape flap. That's my favorite part. He's so cute. He didn't want to go to, uh, he didn't want to get up this morning. And so I was like, Piggy, come on, we got to go to daycare because I talked to him like he's five and he would not move and I had to like pick him up and I had to carry him in daycare. I was like, he doesn't really want to be here today, but he's, he was still asleep. He was so good in the car. He didn't get in my lap. He was so good. He was so tired. I don't know why he was so tired. Oh, sleepy boy. Uh, lots of people said that they voted for your pillow, Kimberly. Oh, it's Just fine. so you know. I'm good. <laughs> All right. So um, Farm Girl Vintage, we're still stitching along with that. That is, of course, Lori's book farm girl vintage 2 and the blocks for this week the first one is the maple leaf block Teresa Williams made both of these this is week 27 and the milk cow block which is week 28 and um, 
For the eyes, she did, um, can you zoom in, Lily? She did, um, I think it's really cool how she did it. She did really fat French knots, like really fat. Oh. And then the buttons, see the little buttons? So she used um, some of Lori's cute little buttons to put the little nostrils. So that's cute. So um, I think we have some pop-ups of things that you guys have sewn, which is really cool. Sorry, we're kind of moving everything off because we're going to move stuff on in a little bit. So this is the stay-at-home quilter. I really like that name. And so those are last week's block. Super cute. And then said with love. That is cute. That is older Sweetwater fabric. Wow, that's a good pulling from your stash because I like both. I like that. And this is Eder Ferrero. Every time I see her name, I think it's like a fancy car. I think of like I don't know some kind like of fancy Ferrari? car. Like Ferrari. Yeah, or like there's another car that's like some funky name. It reminds me of uh, Ferrero Rocher, like the that. Template. That's what. It, what does that mean? Uh, oh, it's okay. Well, yeah, whatever. It's, I thought it was. A it car. says that we had at the photo shoot. Oh, okay. I didn't eat it. <laughs> and then Gina Quilts. Super cute. That's uh, Bonnie Camille fabric. And look, Valerie and Stitches. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. Looks so good. And then Wendy M. Darling. Super cute. I like the, um, what are those called? Yardsticks. Oh. Yeah, do you see them? I was that's like, really what is cool. the name of that? Yeah. And then Grammys, Girls, and more. Oh, cute little bees. And then Patsy Wheeler, super cute. Hummingbird thread. So it's fun how to see like how everybody's blocks, how people are keeping up, how their blocks are all coming together. And then we're back to round one. All right. Okay. Um, <laughs> Teresa said, I wish I could sew as well as Teresa at Fat Quarter Shop. Oh, Me too. Yay. That's funny because they have the same name. Oh. <laughs> and then uh, a few people were wondering, um, since the one of the blocks had the buttons sewn on it already, is oh. it a good idea to sew the buttons on now or wait after quilting? It depends on your quilter. Most people do the buttons at the end. Um, like if it was me because I use... I use when I use uh, Gina Tell to do my quilts or Mike from um, Mike, I um, put the buttons on after. But you, if you're going to have somebody do the, pa not pantographs, but like free motion, then you can put it on before. It's really up to your long arm quilter, to be honest, mm -hmm. and what they're comfortable with, um, that kind of thing. And if you're home, you know, if you're quilting at home, what you prefer. Mm -hmm. So total uh, preference. And I'm probably one of those, like, people that, like, at the end forget to put the buttons on, so that would be me. All right. And we do have another new YouTube member, Christine Martinez. Welcome, Christine. Thank you. Woo-woo. All right. Yay. Okay, so we have just a couple more things to show you before um, I show you my star chain. So this is a brand new bag that came in stock, and Lori brought me one, so I thought I would show you. It's like, um, it's like a shopping bag. It says sewing mends the soul. Oh. It's cute, right? And it's kind of like the bags you get at Home Goods. Like, what is this texture? Oh, it's like, like plastic, usable? but not. Yeah, it, but it's like user friendly. It has a name. It has a name. I, I can't yeah, think of it right Yeah, it's got a name, now. but it's cool, and I like it. And I'm gonna take it with me this weekend. So Lori brought me this. So I was gonna show this to you. And then these came in and I hadn't got to see them yet. Okay, this is amazing. These are gift bag sets. So, um, and we're selling them as like a big set. So these are Christmas bags. Ooh. I'm gonna just open it. Um, so, I'll sh so there's 24 in each, so that's a lot. Oh, look, there's the opening at the end. So in there you get, how many of each, six? Eight. I can do the math, right? CPA. So this is one, and then they're really nice. Ooh. Look, Christmas. Okay, so there's one. Anyway, I'm taking these home because I never have. Oh, so cute. Hashtag, oh, so cute. 
I know, look, it's a snowman. And yesterday when we went sh shopping, she was like, where's your snowman section? And they were like, we don't have one. Oh. I was like, how can you be a Christmas store with no so snowman section? <sighs> so anyway, next year, this is gonna be all under my tree. I'm gonna take these home. Cute, right? Mm -hmm. So you get eight of each size. 24 total. So this is the Christmas gift bag set. And these again are Lori Holt and they all have a little tag Two from so there's that one. But then this one, look at this. This is like me in a candy store right here. Okay. Look, it's got a little, sewing machine oh. solo sewing thing so that's the small one it's a sewing machine these are gonna be gone by tomorrow I think <laughs> sewing machine with a little um the quilt she's like the quilt is coming off and then this is uh one of her fabrics from vintage happy too and these are really good quality and they're pretty oops this one, it's like a shoestring. And the insides are all colored. So like this one's red, aqua, yellow. So of oh. course everything, it's fancy, right? I love that. Oh, that's so cool. I hide them in my sewing room. I'm not gonna put them where my kids can get them. <laughs> All right. I see there's actually quite a few new people tuning in right now that this is their first live stream. Uh, oh. So that probably looks a little funny. We're just like going through uh, products products and uh, uh, gift bags and such. Um, but we are a quilting channel. We do a lot of tutorials and live streams like the one you're watching right now. Um, if you've watched us for a while and you haven't subscribed yet, um, please subscribe because that helps us out a lot with our numbers on YouTube. It's totally free. Um, and you get notified every time we go live or uh, start, uh, post a new video, a new tutorial, stuff like that. Uh, yes. And we have a new, the other new thing that we have this week is bumper crop. It is a brand new It's a pattern and a brand new quilt kit. The fabric is Lancaster by Joe Morton. Nova designed it and stitched it, and Gina from Thread Graffiti quilted it. Mm. So there's the front and the back. Ooh. It's fancy, right? Mm -hmm. I like it. It makes like a circular, like, I don't know, like it, it like, like the circle doesn't just go here, it just keeps going. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, I like it. So there's that. So let me know if you guys have any questions on anything because we are going to be, or I'm going to be talking about starching in a few minutes. So we'll, um, we're gonna kind of move everything and then, but I'm gonna answer questions. Yeah, so we're gonna have a special starching segment coming up here. Um, first off, Linda Prather had been asking, how do you send a picture to get it uh, on shout out? Sorry, we're moving okay. a table right now. Yeah, and that's what's so squeaking. Yeah, so to get your picture, what you do is you can just post it on Instagram, on Facebook, on a Kimberly Stitch Squad. Some people emailed them to me. Um, we obviously can't um, show everybody's um, we wish we could. Um, but yeah, we just kind of pick stuff that we think is fun um, and we don't want to leave anybody out or anything. So yeah, just post it. You can even say, I want to be featured on the live stream. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, yes, yeah, so hashtags, Kimberly Stitch Squad. Make sure you join those too. Marsha Baker just reminded everyone to make sure to hit the like, thumbs up button. Uh, it's right below the video. Uh, there's like a thumbs up, thumbs down. If you like what you're watching, hit the thumbs up also helps us out a lot helps us uh reach uh new quilters yay and amy young had been asking how did emma do at her dance competition oh not so good i thought she did great but um her critiques were not and she was like oh, my yeah. critiques were horrible and i was like it's just a dance like it's fine but yeah um we're going to another one this weekend so we're going to be in bastrop and uh christopher is going with us and so um and tomorrow oh. is my 17th wedding anniversary so kevin's <gasps> gonna come Congratulations. I know I'm old, Lily. <laughs> I'm getting old. I was like, oh, I'm getting kind of getting old. Um, yeah, so um, hopefully he can come. It's really close to home, but it's a hip hop convention. So I told her, I said, um, 
I'm not going to watch because it's just too loud. It's just too much. Um, it's overpowering. Um, but it's going to be a lot of fun. And it's good because it doesn't start till 845 tomorrow. So I can sleep in a little bit. Um, which is always nice. But she does have a class tonight from 8 to 9. And then I'm in charge of a pizza party at 9 o'clock tonight. Which is my bedtime. So we're going to see how that goes. Because um, I'll probably be half asleep. Okay. Uh, Teresa's asking, would you consider kidding any of the quilts from the Kona calendar? I ordered all the fabric for the January quilt and was wishing there was an easy way to buy it all. So if you just call Elva and say, um, I'm looking at this one, you know, she would obviously have to write down your name and your credit card number and your address. And then she could pull the calendar, um, and she could find it on the raw. If it's a Robert Kaufman free pattern, she can find it, you know, give her time. She can download it and then she can just figure out what skews. Um, and then just put together a kit for you on the one you want. We couldn't kit all of them, but I'm sure we could do a custom kit for you. Okay. So question here. That's a great segue. Claudia Olivieri. Ooh, great last name. Says, good morning. When you can, please ask Kimberly if she starches her backing fabric and how does she deal with all that fabric? Okay. So on backing, you're supposed to starch it because you starch the front. Half of the time, well... 20% of the time I starch the back, 80% I don't because I don't have time and I never really wash my quilts. So it's fine with me, but um, you should. And to do something that big, you just starch it and just, I'll, I'll kind of talk about it when I do it, but I put it over a, um, like if you're backing, say you it's four yards, but you're gonna do a two yard cut and a two yard cut and stitch it together, I would cut it, starch the two yards, let it dry, starch the next one, let it dry and just drape it over something really big like a fence outside or you know something where it could really dry all right um and i do need to switch my battery real quick so okay. what we're going to do is we're going to cut to our loading screen uh and then we'll be right back okay I do. First, I want to credit Lisa Bonjing. She's the one that taught me. We have a link to the um, video that she taught it to me like five or six years ago. It's amazing. This is what I do. First, you should not pre you should not starch pre-cuts because they will shrink. So um, I wouldn't if I was working on a pre-cut. When I say pre-cut, I mean layer cake, charm pack, or jelly roll because they're going to shrink. Now, if your pattern will work with that shrinkage, that's okay. Everything is going to shrink about half an inch. It's going to shrink in one direction, not both directions. So you just decide what works for you. Um, you should starch the back and the binding if you starch the front. I don't always do that, but um, really when you're quilting or sewing or crafting, do whatever you want to do. Like, and don't feel like you have to do this. If you don't want to starch, don't starch. I'm just showing you what I do, but you don't have to. Um, this is just, I really want my blocks to be perfect. So the first thing that I do is in my drawers at home, like my drawers, like my, what do you call them? Drawers. drawers. Yeah. So I got these boxes like two years ago or a year ago at Target. They're just square boxes and they happen to fit my drawers. And what I do is in the back of the drawer, I have my unstarched fabric. And in the front of the drawer, I have my starch. So this is the fabric. This is Vintage Happy 2, which is also in the quilt behind me. And I am using this on the Sherry McConnell 2020 free block of the month. So I've used these fabrics because I've starched them. So I don't starch. I like to, I do like to starch everything at the beginning of a project, but I've been so busy, I haven't been able to. So I'm gonna show you how I starch. And then what I do um, after it's starch is it goes in the starch bucket. So that if I want, I'm gonna use these and the remaining blocks, but I always keep my starched and my unstarched separate. That's just something that I do. I mean, you can feel it and tell, but it's what I do. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take this half yard 
and to starch I'll show you how I starch so I will leave it together okay I have a Amazon link to what I use it is really hard to find where I live um, it is there's been a change in starch company it's Niagara original hold they also have a heavy hold or a yeah heavy heavy whatever and it's in all the stores in Texas but I think it's too heavy so I actually have to from the Amazon link below that's where I purchase my starch because I cannot find it in stores I wish that I could because um, it's really hard for me to find so anyway this is what I use and what I do is I take a ironing board and I put a scrap fabric so this could be like a leftover fabric or it could just be a Kona but I don't change it except like every six months so we just put a white here so sometimes I use like leftover backing that comes back from the quilter um, we're just using white today so that um, it doesn't confuse you but I just use scraps whatever I have but I don't change it very often so I don't iron I just take it straight off the bolt or however and this is how I starch so Lily can get kind of up close but what I do is I'm gonna try to do it really fast because I do like it to be smooth and if you start if you start and stop it kind of won't be smooth and you might get spots so I'm gonna just kind of do it and then we'll talk through it so I try to go very even and I go I just I guess you'll just have to watch what I do but I tr I go really fast and I never stop when I'm doing it because I don't want like I said, if, if it gets uneven, you can get spots. Then I flip it and I do the other side. And I won't iron this until it is completely dry. Yes. It takes about eight hours to dry, four to eight hours to dry. I try to do this at night and then let it sit over um, overnight. So now it's all wet. And then what I do is I have this little drying rack and I make sure it's even and I go like this and I let it dry. Now, um, a lot of you have said, um, you know, oh, and then I have a rug under it. So in my sewing room at home, I got these rugs off of Wayfair. Wayfair's a great place to get rugs for like 50 bucks. They're just cheap rugs. And that way nobody slips in the bathroom. And this sits in a shower. It could sit out on a, it could sit on your rug. You could put towels down. But I would recommend just some cheap rug or Bed Bath & Beyond. You know, they always have that 50% off coupon. And I will just starch. Now, it's going to shrink, but I'm going to have crisp results. And again, Lisa Bonjean is the one that taught me this. Um, I do not wash. Um, so ask me any questions you have. Um, but I do go through about 12 cans a month because I, I um, counted. Yes, we have a few questions. We're going to let a few more roll in. Um, just disclaimer for everyone, too. We are in a very well-ventilated room right now. Um, like a big, big room. Yeah, so make sure, um, like, right. when you're doing it at home and to have, like, the window open and stuff because, um, you know, spray cans and yeah, all and that. Yeah, it doesn't have... Okay, the one question that we've been getting is um, if you have corn in your starch, it can cause bugs, and the bugs will eat at it. Starch is no longer made with corn, from what I've read and um so it won't damage and for me i really want it to be perfect but when i die i don't care what happens to them i mean nobody's gonna know like when i'm die, i'm dead i'm dead so like i don't care if it did you i mean i know that sounds horrible but like to me it's just not a thing that i worry about too much i can do another one i'll just do another one while i'm talking so i'm not just standing here yeah, yeah we do have a lot of questions really yep. in i'm just, just yeah, okay just cool. ask them and i'll do this as i go cool cool okay so if say you had something like the Bloomtopia kit, would you starch that or not? Yep. And there's plenty of if you ever buy a kit from Fat Quarter Shop or a block the month from Fat Quarter Shop, there should always be enough fabric for that to happen. Yes. All right. And I did make Bloomtopia. Um, the quilt that I made is on a traveling road show, but I did starch the front and on that one I did starch the back. And um, there's plenty of fabric in the kit. All right. Uh, Alicia Richardson was asking why so much starch. It is just what I like. I like it to be 100% starched. It takes um, all of the shrinkage out so that when I make a block and I'm, if you just make a block and you starch as you go, it's going to shrink as you go. 
and I like my blocks. It just gives me the perfect, um, bring me my um, bloom to my, sorry, motor block heads. So I'll show you kind of my blocks and how, and see this gets wet and crunchy. So the one I have at home is like super crunchy and I, it just doesn't ruin this. So if you look at my block right here, you're gonna see it's really, all the points are perfect. Um, it's super crisp, you're not gonna see wrinkles, it's super starched. I just like my quilts to look like this and that's how Lisa Bonjean um, quilts look it, and she also does super, super small piecing. She does a lot of, if you buy any of her patterns or her books, um, she does like one inch squares and two inch squares and tiny, tiny piecing and she can do that and achieve that look by doing this and this is obviously her method. So um, I learned it from the best. Okay, um, Kathy Newfro says, why did my mom used to put her starch stuff in the fridge? Have no, oh, okay, so there's a product called Stay Flow, and I know Peach and Gabriel use it on um, Kimberly Stitch Squad, and they've talked about it, and so if you have questions on Stay Flow, it's much cheaper. You can ask them. I, um, Gina Tell was super nice. She sent me some. I tried it. It was just not, um, it was, number one, too much work. Number two, too much mess. And for some reason, I didn't like the texture of it. Um, and that's, it's the same thing with the heavy. It's just too much texture. It's all about, do you want it, how you want it to feel? And so I didn't love Stay Flow, but it is a much cheaper option. You can use Best Press. That's a more expensive option. Um, I like this because I can, it's aerosol. I know it's bad for the environment. I'm sorry. Um, but there's no way I could sit here and Best Press. I'd have to, it wouldn't work. Um, so this is all, and this can be, to me, when I think about it, this can be a very controversial topic in quilting. It can be very like risque, because it's like people are very passionate about what they do and why they do it, and um, you should do it this way, whatever. This is just what I do. People have asked, so I'm showing it, but you do not have to do it my way. Um, I just, this is the way that I get the best results. And it's been a game changer for me, because I used to starch as I went, well, then you have to wait for it to dry, and I can just starch, and, and this, this um, thingamajiggy, um, drying oh, rack, sorry, it folds up. So when you see it, you can get a lot on it. And I also have um, on my bathtub, now this is a room I do not use, it's a spare room. I don't use the bathtub, so you don't have to worry about that, but I use all of this, and then I use, um, pipe. Um, someone in Kimberly Stitch Squad gave me the idea and Kevin and Peyton made them for me a couple years ago. It's like PVC pipe and then you put it on the bathtub and so I dry in the shower and in the bathtub. Right. Oh, she told me to sit down and I sat on my box. There's a box. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Yes, we have a lot of questions, yes. so we're going to get through them and, all. And, you know, don't feel like just because I do it, you have to do it, or I'm not, I don't, I'm not, like, preaching to the choir. You do you, do whatever you want to do. All right. Okay. Oh, yeah. For those of you asking for the brand, it is Faultless, and then it's Niagara. That's what it says on the bottle. The Faultless okay, Niagara. It's, um, it's Original Hold. Original Hold. And I have heard some people's cost, some people, like, different areas have it in their Costco, which is, I used to use a different brand that is no longer available and I always got it at Costco and it was cheap. Um, and so I'm spending a ton of money um, on this starch because it's more expensive because I have to get it from Amazon and all that. Um, but it works and... Um, mm -hmm. All right, uh, Cherry Gingham was asking, do you typically leave the fabric folded when spraying and drying? Yes. Since it's folded over. If it is a backing, I don't because that's just too big. If it's a backing, I'll just pull it all open and then just put it all over the whole thing and just let it or over the top of the shower or outside on a fence. All right. Like when I wash my quilts, which is very rare, but I will um, wash it and then dry it, I will just hang it over a fence outside because to me it's like it dries it better, but you can do that with a backing, just put it on a fence or... Mm -hmm. Put on your patio, or you can starch outside mm -hmm. if you don't want to starch inside because you can put the drying rack. It's super easy to put up and down because when my in laws come, we pull all this down, you know, clean the shower, you know, make sure all the fumes are out of there, all that stuff. 
And we do also have a link to the drawing rack that we're using on Amazon. Yeah, I bought it on Amazon, and somebody gave me the idea from Kimberly Stitch Squad. Um, I copied someone's idea. All right. For people using Best Press, would you still um, do what you just did right now? Yeah, but your finger's going to fall asleep. <laughs> um, I would maybe try to go to... Um, First of all, it's going to be really expensive, but you could go to Home Depot and see if you get like one of those things you can put in the can that's used for paint mm -hmm. and it turns it into an aerosol and you could do it that way. Yeah. I believe uh, that's how Tula Pink does her oh, okay. starch stuff. She talked okay. about that during our live stream with and her. And I'm not real good with any of that kind of stuff, like anything like Home Depot. I did go to Home Depot. I will tell you a funny Home Depot store, so, story. I'm really bad at like anything, <laughs> like paint, anything. I'm just horrible. Um, so I went to Home Depot the other day. No, I went to Lowe's. And I needed to get four little light, the little glass fixtures. So I got them, but I got one that didn't match. And Kevin was like, do you know that you got... I'm like, that's why I should never go to Lowe's or Home Depot by myself because I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. And a lot of people are wondering when you get to pressing your starched fabric, do you use steam or not? I do because it's already shrunk, but I let it completely dry. So like... Like when I say completely dry, I mean completely crispy. And you can see when I cut, I cut out of a corner. Um, you can see each of these. I bet they're all the same corner. I just cut out like a corner. I just cut as little as I can and then that's how I keep my fabric. Um, I don't know, I just kind of cut a little piece so that it's not that messy when I go back to it. And with this quilt, um, I'm making the block six inches. I showed them in the last week, um, one of the last live streams. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna try to use my leftovers as like a patchwork backing because it's gonna be more of a small quilt. And I think that because I started with half yards, um, that I'll be able to get six and a half inch squares and put them all over the back. That's my plan anyway. Uh, do you starch pre-cuts? Okay, so I starch layer cakes, but they shrink. So your pattern has to be for something that's nine and a half or smaller. I starch charm packs but you got to have something four and a half or, or smaller so if your pattern uses the full pre-cut you cannot starch um i always starch back quarters i always starch fat eights but the truth is i always try to starch everything but if a pattern calls for it you can't because it's going to shrink half an inch one direction so you just have to see um but i also don't i never use jelly rolls that's just a secret i, I don't know why they're messy they get everywhere i just i my favorite pre-cut is a layer cake um, but I waste a lot of fabric doing it. Um, but I, um, you should not pre-wash a layer cake charm pack or mini charm pack. All right. Uh, will the colors run from the starch? Mine don't. But I also, I mean, good quality fabric from like a quilt shop should never run. It should, you should never see like green or red on the pipes or blue or anything like that. If you do, then you shouldn't use that fabric because it's um, bleeding. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um... Are you trying to like yes? Uh, okay, is there an odor okay. to the starch? Yes, and I, that's the one thing that I don't like about this fabric. This is called DuraFresh Scent Technology. It smells like flowers. I'm not a fan of the smell, but I've gotten used to it, and now my sewing room just smells flowery. Um, the old product that I used to use didn't have a smell at all and I loved it because I don't really, I don't wear perfume. I don't like all that. Like the other day we went to, we went to Chili's and I was like, that guy has on way too much cologne. We were like, whew. Anyway, um, yeah, it does have a smell that I don't love. The heavy hold does not have a smell, but I had to weigh, do I, would I rather have it so stiff that I could hardly sew with it or would I rather have it where I could sew with it and smell? So, and I do, I put a, um, I did put a little lamp thingy that you can put the, what is that called, where you put the scent in it and it melts? Oh, a Scentsy? Scentsy, but not that brand, but you know, yeah. like that kind of thing. I think I got it at um, yeah. oh, Cracker Barrel. Warmer. Cracker Barrel. Mm -hmm. And then I put that in the room and I turn that on sometimes so then it smells like vanilla rather than the starch. So that is the one thing that I did do because it was bothering me. All right. Um, and then if you were to wash your quilt, would the starch wash out? Yes. And people have asked me before, can you see the starch? Not on this brand. Um, sometimes if you get a brand that flakes, you know, you're gonna see it, but it just, and then it's super stiff now, like my blocks are super stiff, but you can see when it's quilted, it all just relaxes with the batting and sinks in and. Um... All right. 
Um, Pauline Silliman was asking, oh, Sliman, sorry. What do, uh, does that method of starching stop the edges from fraying so much? Uh, I don't know. I never really noticed fraying. Um, maybe. I don't want to say yes, but I don't really notice a lot of fraying in my quilts. So maybe. I haven't not starched in so long that I don't know how to answer. I'm sorry. If that um, makes sense. I think it does a little bit. Keep it from fraying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Denise for said yes. Denise says, yeah, for her it does. Um, stitch by stitch says, so if you starch, uh, use the fabric, then put leftovers away for years, do you then restarch it? No. And I keep my leftovers, I have a drawer for starched leftovers and unstarched leftovers. Everything is always separated. Um, that's why I have them in the box. But so in the box, I have everything in my sewing room I'm currently using, and I only have so many drawers. So I have to finish those drawers before I can pick something else else up um but when it's done i have a i only have two um two shelves that are leftovers because i don't like to keep a lot of leftovers because i like to use it all up like with the patchwork pinwheels that kind of thing um and i keep them separate okay and let's see how do the quilts feel once they're done totally normal totally soft i mean they're crispy when they go to the quilt or when they come back they're totally fine yeah so the quilting kind of helps um make it feel normal again yeah and i can tell you like um my quilters love me because my quilts are always like pieced good so i know they love me because there's not a lot of um waviness on the quilting machine all right a few people are wondering if i starch i'm still experimenting with that um i haven't tried kimberly's method yet because I, I d haven't bought that much starch yet. But yeah, I did accidentally buy the heavy hold version of the Faultless, and I really like the way that smells. I also really like the way the Best Press Lavender smells. Yep. Uh, okay. A few people were wondering, what was the old starch, and why did you switch? So the old starch was just Faultless. And then one day, when I went to HEB, because I would get it at HEB and Costco, it just wasn't there. And I couldn't figure out why it wasn't there. And on the live stream, somebody said, oh, well, Niagara bought Faultless. And I couldn't find it in the store. So then I purchased something on Amazon. And what came was the firm version. And then I was like, wait, it's really thick. And, and like I said, like if Lily wants to use firm, great. Mm -hmm. Like everybody should do their own thing. Like don't just do what I say because if you like it, do it. Um, and so I kind of... Oh, Niagara, then they reached out to me and they sent me um, a bunch of different bottles to try. And this is the one I like. And so now the only source, the only way I can find it is Amazon. Um, when I went to Houston um, the last two weekends, we went to Target one of the days and I did look because it's cheaper at Target, obviously. And I couldn't find it in Houston either. So um, I just order it and I use that Amazon affiliate link. Um, and I... <laughs> I'm always asking them, where's the link? Because I want to order the right one. Um, but I, I go through about 12 a month at a minimum. So it is expensive. It adds to the cost. Um, to me, it makes it go faster once. I mean, obviously, it's a lot of work to starch. But my favorite part of quilting is um, starching and cutting and binding. Not the piecing. Forget the, I could care less about the sewing machine. I mean, I, I love my sewing machine, but still, like, my favorite part is cutting. And so when it's nice and crisp, I love ironing. I love all that. Like, it would be great if I had a team where they just sewed and I just starched and ironed and cut. I would be, like, in heaven. Because <laughs> that's my favorite part. I don't know why. I just love it. Like, I just love the, I think, the crispness. Mm -hmm. uh, a few people are asking about Tyrael magic. No. I tried it. No. it. What it does is it gives that, it shrinks it up and makes it shriveled. Do not do it. I tried it one time. And when I tried it, I tried it on like a whole collection and it ruined it. So yes, I thought that too. Don't try it. Yeah. That, that's more for like, if you want to turn it, like crunchy. if you want your, yeah, if you want it crunchy or if you want your fabric to act like paper. Yeah. Um, it's used for projects that would typically use paper, but you want to use your fabric for. Yeah. And like, if you use that, it'll have like gr grids or something. It'll have like stuff on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, don't do that. And that would be real expensive. Yeah, it, it is a lot more expensive than the other starches. Um, let's see, Vicky on Facebook was asking, does having the fabric starched a lot wear out your machine needles quicker? No, and I'm horrible about changing my needle. <laughs> I, um, I, do, I do do it every project, but I really should do it like every, like there could be days where I could sew eight hours straight, 
so that obviously you should change it that day like you shouldn't let it go um but yes i don't think so at all and i mean needles to me needles are like you can just buy like 10 packs of them for super cheap yes yes uh but yeah um everyone's saying all the different ways that they like to starch some people use flatter some people don't starch yeah, yeah. so debbie taylor who used to work for us she uses um it has a different name but it's in the starch section at the store it's called oh gosh what is it called but she used to use something that was different and she loved it like she swore by it i can't think of the name of it but it's similar starch but different it's it's like that what you just said but different um so everybody kind of has their thing that they like and you should you know just try it and if you don't like it don't do it if you don't i mean everybody should just do what they want to do and i don't ever want to come on here and tell you like do this or this is the way that's not you can do whatever you want at home like that's the best thing about crafting if you start doing something because somebody else is like do this and you don't enjoy it it's going to take all the fun out of the project um so you should you know i just i've been quilting a long time i used to just starch not that heavy but i would starch and iron and starch and iron and i would be ironing forever and then when lisa bonjean came up with that method she happened to be filming like the very next month and we did a video on it and I have never gone back. And I always try to credit Lisa because it is her idea, Primitive Gatherings. She came up with it, um, but it's changed my life. It's awesome. All right. Um, and we do have a super chat from Teresa for Thank $20. You. Thank you. Uh, she put a little, um, it's like a big lemon hugging a little lime. It's very Aww. cute. Um, I'm a lime. <laughs> and then she said, gotta feed my fix, keep you running. Oh, Thank you. Thank I you. love that. We're so appreciative. Okay, and we did have another new YouTube member, uh, Susan Summers. Welcome, Susan. Thank you. The last name Summers reminds me of... Uh, Suzanne? Uh, yeah, her name's Susan, or Suzanne. Yeah. I was thinking Suzanne Summers from oh. the 80s. Oh, oh it's what? Before your time. Yeah, it was. You're right. I was thinking... She of used to do the jazzercise. Remember oh. that? Remember her? Yeah, I know who you're talking about now. I didn't realize that was her name. I was yeah. thinking of uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, I've never watched that. Buffy Summers. I don't All know. Right. Yay! Okay, so you guys have a wonderful weekend. I will be back next Friday with who knows what. So have a great weekend. <laughs> Bye, guys.